Welcome to today's SatoCon Saturday. Now, I'm not going to do a total review of the sixth queue of the green belt. I'm not going to do any more of those complete reviews. I may go back and redo that at the end once we complete. I complete the whole series of the black belt. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But if you need to review anything for your sixth queue, go back to each individual video. We're moving on now to the fifth queue, which is a green belt with our first strike. Green belt, I consider an intermediate rank. So you're now out of the kindergarten, elementary school. We're in the middle school. We're in the intermediate level ranks. Our techniques for today, first techniques for the go queue or fifth queue level are crescent and reverse crescent or inside and outside crescent as some people call them. In Japanese, it's mikazukigeri and gyaku mikazukigeri. And so those are our two kicks. Essentially, from our yoi or ready position, I'm going to bring my knee up and out. Now this is the same chamber I would use if I was going to do a side blade kick over here. From here, we're going to come up and around, snapping the foot at the apex, finish across, and back to our neutral stance. Chamber, extend, return, and back to neutral. That's basically the crescent kick. Varying heights, again, if I'm kicking to the knee, kicking into the body, kicking up toward the head, depending on what you're going to do. Now, it's not considered a super powerful kick. However, in a recent MMA fight, I did see a guy knocked out with a crescent kick to the jaw, so it can be highly effective. Don't, don't ever try the Chuck Norris kicking a gun or a knife out of a guy's hand. Eh, you'll see that in the movies. Don't do that. That's stupid. It's a good way to get an artery cut and lose a foot. The reverse of that, Gyaku, reverse, Mikazu Gigeri, we just start the chamber where it would be the finish of the crescent kick. Now we start from that position. Now I'm only using glute medius and minimus and a little bit of my external obliques, so there's going to be even less power in the reverse crescent. But it's essentially the exact same motion as the crescent, just in reverse. So we can put the two together or practice them individually. Now, how and where to use them. In our version of Pinyan Sandan, for example, where we crescent before we come in with the wing move, which can be a throw, can be a block, can be an arm break, whatever, the crescent is more of a diversionary tactic. Um, the Shotokan version, for instance, is just a straight knee lift and then stomping into position. The lifting of the leg can be a strike. Our version, the crescent, can be a kick. But more often than not, it's to add energy and level change for a throw. So don't be confused in functionality with the Pinyan Sandan crescent kick, which is coming up also at this rank. It's our kata for this rank. For combative purposes, Kelly, Nishmas, a visitor from afar that I've not seen for a long time. Hey. So we're in a fighting stance, we're moving around, we're sparring. Combatively, again, as I said, I did see, and it's easier for me with my bad hip, a kick to the head, knock somebody out in a recent MMA fight. But more functionally, as we're moving around, I would use this as a clearing to knock the arm out of the path to then come in with my finish. I could use it to take out a leg. If I'm coming off of the front foot, same thing, just move, moving and clearing. Now with the crescent, with the Mikazuki Gedi, that can be very powerful. If I take this to the arm as I'm sparring, we can damage the elbow pretty nicely. The reverse crescent, again, less powerful. So instead of coming all the way from the back leg and really whacking here, if we're in closer, I can clear with the reverse crescent, not as powerful, but still allows entry, okay? So um, crescent and reverse are not, outside of the few times that I've seen it, purely knockout, but they can be effective as clearing. If she's striking, I can use my crescent kick low to divert as I parry the strike, and again, I've created an opening with that kick. So tactically, 
the circularity of the kick, I'm pretty much straight on. I don't have to turn all the way side like a roundhouse, the most common kick everybody throws in sparring. I don't have to completely turn my body. I can still stay essentially straight on so it's not very telegraphed when I come up and I just move that out of the way. It's very non-telegraphic, so very useful in clearing, opening, or closing your opponent. If from here I wanted to open, I would kick the front hand. Now I've created an open position. If I want to close her off, I've created the closed position where we can follow. So that's basic functionality in real simple terms of the crescent reverse crescent kicks. That's our technique for today. As always, thank you for joining. Like, share, subscribe, ding the bell, join my Facebook page with the same name, leave comments, ask questions, and as always, until next week, keep practicing.